going to do an inking demonstration with the Platinum Carbon Ink Pen. This is a desk pen with an extra fine nib and it has a pull off cap and an inset nib. So I've already prepared a little illustration here and I'm just going to go ahead and wipe down the pen because it does tend to get some ink on it whenever I uncap it and then we will begin inking. All right, and for some reason, this pen tends to get ink all over me. I literally just uncapped it and that began. So hopefully we won't get ink all over the piece. And since it's an extra fine nib, don't expect a whole lot of line variation out of this pen. If you're looking for a platinum pen with more line vari variation, I recommend a platinum cool. Now, I don't normally do art with very fine lines. I tend to go more bouncy and cartoony, partially because I just don't have the patience or the elbow room in the studio for very fine lines. Don't really have anywhere I can afford to hunker down for an hour and a half. And this pen has been filled with platinum carbon ink, but I am using a platinum converter. Now on the package for this pen, it does recommend that you only use the cartridge inside. So I wonder if that recommendation extends to uh, not using the platinum converter and not using uh, platinum ink from a bottle. However, if you guys watched the unboxing video, you'll notice that the converter fits into this pin just about perfectly. So, um, it probably does work. The only reason I bring up that perhaps it's not meant to go together is I do have some leaking issues, but that might be from the suction on the cap forcing ink out of the nib. Already, spirals are really getting in the way, so I will just remove it. Of course, the cat's really getting in the way, and I can't just remove him. He could sit on the chair behind me, but he chooses not to. Mm hmm. All right, that's a little easier. Except he keeps ducking his head under my arm. Which makes inking kind of finicky. And also, the ink basically exploded all over my hands when I uncapped it. And even though I washed my hands, I'm still kind of uh, hesitant about getting ink smudges all over the paper. Alright, did a little bit of housekeeping. Let's see if having a little more elbow room to ink will help improve this. And given that this is such a fine tip pen, it's starting to shred the paper. And I've never really had an issue with this paper before. It may just really not like fine nibs like this. Now that I have a little more room, I can actually pull these long lines a little more cleanly and get a nicer result. Fortunately, I started down kind of away from the area of focus, so. Normally, I, when I'm familiar, I start with the eyes, but I was having some troubleshooting problems, so I'm glad I did not. But even, even not going into wet areas. I'm having problems with the pen tearing up the paper. And I'm trying to sort of override my uh, innate inking response, which is to bear down really hard and get a bouncy line. trying not to do that because I know that it'll, it'll tear into the paper. And I may need to just use a smooth paper 
instead of a watercolor paper. I did want to watercolor this after though, so. So even though I just cleaned off the nib, every time I go back into this area, it starts killing again and causing problems. So this pen came recommended to me by my friend Candace, who does beautiful, very delicate, large illustrations. And I'm gonna link her work in the description below so you guys can go admire it. And this is the pen that she uses and she does a beautiful, beautiful job with it. She's actually the artist who kind of inspired me to use uh, fountain pens in my art. And she has a much lighter hand than I do and she does a lot of detail in her illustration. So I really want you guys to check it out. But I was hoping I could do not something as beautiful as she does because we have very different styles and we've spent our time um, practicing different skills. But I was sort of, sort of I used to do um, with like high tech C pens, I used to do some fairly wispy line art illustrations and I was kind of hoping I could bring some of what I did there to here. And uh, it's been a couple years since I've illustrated in that style. So I've forgotten some of the things I used to know. And I'm also just making a lot of dumb mistakes. Because I don't really ink in this style anymore. Maybe if we all ask Candace super nicely, she'll do a tutorial. And you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm also probably trying to move too fast. It's always my problem. My life is kind of too crammed with things. Um, and I have plans for this evening. So I'm trying to get this done. And I probably should have uh, saved this for a day when I didn't have plans. really envy my friends who have day jobs because when they are done with their day job, they're done for the day and they can do things and not um, have sort of a roster of things that they have to do from the time they get up to the time they pass out. I know a lot of my artist friends are in the same boat as me, especially the ones who work day jobs themselves because as soon as they get home, it's time to start their second life. And we're expected to be super grateful. You know, we're artists. We're so lucky we get to do this. Except it's like we're working two jobs and we're getting paid for like 1.5. And we don't get vacations. We don't take vacations. And I'm not like doing this to, to complain. I'm sorry about that. I was just thinking about like, like, I don't know how tired I get and how I'm not doing my best work because I'm trying to do so much. And how my significant other is, he works a day job, and he actually does a lot of stuff to help me out. But, like, he doesn't always understand how, if we're going over to visit a friend or something, I bring work with me. And it's because I, to do the things I do, I have to get such a massive amount of stuff done every single day. And I can't, I can't just take, it's always like, well, why can't you take... Why can't you take a day off? Because I can't just take a day off. I'm always behind, it seems like. And then my, even my artist friends don't necessarily understand it. We went to go visit a couple of them in, um, in North Carolina. And one of them was like, you, you really just don't play video games anymore. And it's like, nope, I don't have time to. I don't really miss that, honestly. But I miss like feeling like I can really take my time with something. Anyway, I'm starting to kind of get a groove with this, so that's good. I'm not super thrilled about um, everything that's getting on my hands. And this is definitely something that if I wanted to get proficient, because this doesn't have as much flex as the cool. And to be fair, I have a cool medium. So the cool fine and the cool extra fine might have less flex as well. 
Um, I don't, I mean, my experience with flexible fountain pens tends to be the noodler side of things. This is really kept into the paper. Um, so what I might have to do is do an initial inking pass and then come back and ink over it again to add some line variation. I just can't. I just can't personally stand the thought of like dead line weights. I'd rather it look really, really sketchy than have dead line weights. Candace does a wonderful job though of um, adding line variation in some places and then holding back on line variation in others. So I'm going to need to try and get her to it's really good though for like fine hatching and stuff. Like if you can afford to have a light hand, it actually works really well. For me, it's the long lines start getting troublesome. And I'm also inking on water, a, a type of watercolor paper. It's a watercolor cardstock, really. Um, and so it will catch the, the nib and drag it elsewhere, which is what happened up here. Anyway, in case you guys can't tell, this sort of life is a love-hate life. Um, I love being able to draw for a living. I hate that because uh, I'm a freelancer. My work personal life balance is like completely obscured. And I'm in between uh, bigger stable jobs right now. So I'm just... And those of you who are in this boat know what I'm talking about. I am just generating a lot of stuff and doing a lot of really small commissions and doing a lot of shows, stuff like that. And I'm grateful that those are an opportunity for me, but there, it's a lot more work to do con after con after con, commission after commission after commission um, for very small amounts of money than it would be just to have stable, stable work. And then there's also all the, the job search stuff and making spec art for to try and and be applicable for certain jobs. And it's I'm recording this. It's graduation weekend. And uh, a friend and I were just talking about uh, young people graduating. And she went to school for tech. And I went to school for fine. Well, started for fine art and went for comics after uh, for my second degree, and, uh, we both, both times I graduated, I graduated where there was not really anything in the job market in the areas that I live in. Oh, I'm off camera. So, the, both times I graduated, I graduated knowing I was graduating into nothing, and when she graduated, she graduated into nothing as well. So, we wish... Young graduates, all the best. And we hope that you do not graduate into nothing. We hope there is some, some, something for you. Some security, some stability. Man, I'm really going to have to try this pen on a different type of paper because it is tearing up the paper and it's affecting my line quality and it's getting all over my hands. be careful because I want to bump up the line weight but I don't want it to look like a petted line which is what it looks like because I did it on watercolor paper because I want to do watercolor it and of course I drew the most shoujo sort of ray earth looking thing <laughs> it looks like Amy from from uh, Sailor Moon if she decided to go be in Record of Lodos War so it is super anime. Oh, okay. So whenever the paper gets stuck in the nib, which doesn't normally happen to me, except with untipped uh, fountain pen nibs like this, uh, I have to pull it out or I have to dab it on a paper towels. And so my hands are getting really gross and, and dirty, which means there's an increased chance of smudging. How, how do you do this, Candace? Are you just using a paper that doesn't get stuck in your in your nib? Is it not chewing up your paper? How are you? Show me your weirding ways.
So this is a great example of not every tool works for every artist or not every artist can make a tool work for them. This, I have a friend, like I said, who is very good with this specific fountain pen. It's what she uses to ink a lot of her art and it looks gorgeous. And I'm really, really fighting with it. So if you have a favorite artist or a favorite YouTube artist, getting all over my hands, um, who is able to use a certain material and you really struggle with it, um, just maybe keep this video in mind that um, I think I can, nope, I cannot use that as a hand rest. Um, that, you know, not every artist can make every material work for them. It's not necessarily um, a problem with the material. It's not even necessarily a problem with the artist. We have different ways of working. Even something really small, like how I build up lines or how much pressure I put in, or even the fact that I'm talking to you guys and it's affecting my breathing and my ability to pull a line, all of those are you know, things to take into consideration. So when you guys see an artist um, online who's doing a time lapse and you can see sort of what they're working with, but you can't see everything that they're working with, you know, I don't know what paper Candace uses. I mean, I'm sure she's, she's definitely told me. I don't remember off the top of my head what she uses. Um, but I know I'm not using the same paper as her because she was complaining to me that she would like to be able to do it on a paper that can handle watercolors a little bit better. Wow, I effed that up. And this paper handles watercolors decently, so um, she's probably using something more like a bristol with a plate finish or maybe even a marker and pen paper and this doesn't like it doesn't look as good as i wanted it to look right but it doesn't look bad so i don't want you guys to look at this and be like oh she hates her art if she hates her art what do i what will you know what do I have to look forward to? I had a friend in undergrad who used to do that. Oh, she was so awful about her own stuff. She was super, just super mean about everything she did. And she would turn around and my art was way less, way not as good as hers. Um, and she was just like, oh, but don't worry about yours. And it's just like, girl, come on. Not stupid. So, like, please don't think I'm just, like, slamming my own work. I had something, um, it, it went differently in my head than it went on paper. Which is, like, how it always goes, right? And, like, I hadn't fully warmed up for the day, so. So this, the cross-hatching, is definitely where this pin shines. Probably not on a light watercolor paper like this. Probably shines better on a plate or a marker paper or maybe even... I like using uh, fountain pens on vellum sometimes. Not vellum, sorry. Uh, tracing paper. Tracing vellum. This is definitely better for adding small details than it is for trying to ink the whole thing so if you had this is an extra fine so if you had say a cool uh which has more flex than this a cool fine perhaps mixed with this extra fine you could do something really cool i think it could better handle inking than than what i'm able to do with this Okay, so that was an inking demonstration with the platinum dustpin. I got my hands pretty dirty 
This was inked with Platinum Carbon Black ink. I'm going to allow this to cure for 24 hours before I attempt to watercolor over it. So despite my whining and complaining, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, or at least I hope you found it maybe encouraging towards the end when we start talking about not every material working for every artist and don't use that as a gauge for whether or not you are a worthy artist. Um, and hopefully you were able to learn something about the platinum desk pen. You can find a link in the description below if you want to get one of your own. And I hope you guys will check out my fountain pen videos where I show you guys how to ink and the inks that I like to use with fountain pens. So I hope you guys found this video helpful, useful, inspiring, or informative. If you did, make sure you leave a like. If you have a question, let me know in the comments down below. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you.